and I was going down there in Orlando. Um, so the big misconception is that they don't address. A lot of times the parents don't even know that they bust their kids two hours away. Right. You know, the parents don't know where their kids are. Another issue is that a lot of the teachers who are supposed to be bilingual are not. So their teachers are not bilingual. And so they have these kids in these rooms with these teachers who are not even interested in the issue. They're not bilingual. Another issue is that in Virginia State, if you say you speak a different language at home, even if the kid doesn't speak Spanish, guess what? They talk to them as a So even if the kid speaks English better than you, me, and everybody else in this room, they still throw them into easel without teaching the class. So they're wasting tax dollars, and they're not doing anything about it. Because you know that easel gets money? They get money. So they have to have a certain amount of kids in these classes in order for them to receive this funding. And I've been fighting that for years now. And nobody wants to do anything about it. And it's a Virginia thing. At first, I thought it was a Michael thing. Then I thought it was a Chesterfield thing. No, it's a Virginia State thing. So I have been, every time I go to register a kid for school, and they talk to those little, little kids are telling me, Mom, are they saying that I don't speak English? So I have little five year olds telling me, you know, they're saying I don't speak English. Because if you write down that you're bilingual, I'm bilingual, but not, you know, I don't know. But it's like, seriously? Are you kidding me? So I didn't, I wasn't aware of this. They took these kids out of English speaking class. These kids are advanced. Kids are advanced, more advanced than our own kids. And they took them out of advanced classes and put them in people with kids who didn't even speak English. They're telling these kids there's something wrong with them. It's because the moms are down to the kids so much. There's a lot that needs to be fixed, and I'm so angry. So I want people that can work with me. That I can say, hey, Erica, I had this kid. I, yeah, I was co communicating, and I had parents communicating with the school board reps. And the school board reps were not responding to the parents, to, um, I'm not going to say the name. Yeah, um, no, I'm just saying it. Um, with the parents, they weren't communicating. I mean, we were sending emails and emails and emails. One thing that you guys need to do, and I, I, I want you to know you're right. You can send a FOIA. You know what a FOIA request is? Freedom of Information Act. Land, job, and education. And request. Put it in there. Request any document, anything, okay? Um, as it pertains to communications that have to do with a particular topic. Let's say you want all the emails that have to do with um, lunch. lunch. Yeah, lunch. Exactly. Lunch money for a student. And if they send this particular I hate to put you on the spot. What is your feel about a second prison or a building other prison? That doesn't put me on the spot at all. Okay. <laughs> um, our Some people like to hear. There's a huge argument about yeah, there is. Yes. Yeah, there is. So are they preguntando al, al señor Madsen sobre eh, creando otro, otras prisiones? Porque hay mucho argumento sobre creando más prisiones y para mí no es un, una idea sensible. Creo que no se debe armar más prisiones o, o crear más prisiones. So, the jail right now is severely overcrowded. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we need to build a new one. There are things we can do to reduce that population. Again, if people are getting drug treatment in other places other than jail, that would reduce the population some. We can work with the Department of Corrections to get them to pick up people that have already been sentenced and are supposed to be in DOC, but are left in local jail, because what DOC pays in Rego County is not uh, what it actually costs for us to keep them here. So we use money when they do that, plus it takes up more spaces. So there are things that we can do to reduce the jail population as it is. Building a new jail facility is more than the $20 million they talk about that it will cost to build, because you also have to have additional contracts for food service and maintenance, and additional staff. If you can't staff the two jails that we have, how are we going to staff the third jail? So I think that that would be the wrong approach to take. 
um, especially when they're talking about it only having 200 beds, which, as the way the jail is right now, those would be filled the day that it opened. Um, if it is to the point that San Marco County is growing, and unfortunately the opiate problems are not going away anytime soon, um, if, it, if it comes to a point where there needs to be an additional facility, it should only be a drug treatment facility for very low security. You know, but think of it something like a, um, I don't want to say a work camp because it wouldn't be a work camp, but like DOC. Trying to figure out how to run this country, they come from the fact that the school system is broken. It's not fixed from an early, uh, early beginning. And then everybody graduates from high school when they enter the adult life and everybody's just messed up. When in place who was awesome and they should have hired her. The woman used to work for NASA but because she was still working on her bachelor's degree they didn't hire her. They hired some F asshole instead and I don't even know what the lady is now. She was great. Um, I was talking to the school board, talking to the, the principal. They just give you the basic Thank you so much for your concern. I can, you know, best believe I'm on top of it and I'm working on it, blah, blah, blah. They passed the kids through. It was said to us last year that the school board and the superintendent who was in place has conveyed to the principals at the three schools that no child is to be left behind, period. Not left behind as in Georgia would left behind, but no child is to be, you know, held back because they need the funding. So you can have a kid who's completely failing, not learning anything. That child is still being passed on. So, you know, I don't think when you when you have that already in place, I don't think the teachers have much of a incentive to ensure that the kids are learning what they need to learn. They're just, you know, doing what they got to do. And then like his situation, put them in a room, you know, whatever. We want to place them in a room and by itself. I don't, I am so angry that that's happening. I'm so mad you're just now telling me that. You should have told me that the day it happened. You should have came home from school, got on the phone, and called and told me, Auntie C. Yeah, I, but I didn't know what she was, if, if she was going to keep doing this or not. Yeah, but it's been going on for three weeks. You're just telling me tonight. I know, it only happened like one day for three weeks, but then. Okay, wait, wait one, one day days. for three weeks. That doesn't make any sense. How long has it been happening? You said one day in three weeks? Or Maybe it, like a couple or one day in three weeks, but other than... When's that, the last time you were held in the classroom by yourself? The last time was when I was working on fallism. We were having a friendly conversation. But y'all are still walking, working on that? Um, yes, we are still working on that. We, so... It's, 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 like a, it's like just a continued project where we just keep continuing. How many days of the week do you have art? Um, are you saying like next week? Any week. So it's a, it's a B day? Uh, since I ended since I ended last week with a B day, next week I'll have three A days next week. Okay, so, so your art's on an A day? Yes. So, are you going to, like for last week you had it twice, right? Yes. So were you in a room by yourself both days last week? Um, so I was in yourself, there one, I was yourself? in there with like my, 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 yes, by myself. What's in the room? Is are there windows in the room? Are you just is it a desk, a table, what? It is a table. It's filled with like art, art supplies. And you're just left to be by yourself. Yes, work on that. To what work did you on say, your what, work. Did you, what did you do prior to getting into that room by yourself? Uh, basically, I don't know because. Uh, so what were you doing in class before you got I separated? Mean, all I all I was doing was chatting, working as usual, like everybody else. And she just told you to go sit in that room by yourself. I mean, yeah, that's what she did. She moved us. She, when you say us, were you the only one in the room? Uh, I was the only one in the room, yeah, but then she moved other kids with, like, different kids. I'm not worried about those kids. Who else is in the room with you? No one. How, how often has this happened? Like, last week, how often were you placed in the room? Um, it's, like, a little bit often, but not that much often. Last week? Yes, last week. You were in the room by yourself? Yes, I was like for like, I think it was... You only had a class twice last week, right? Yeah. So, Tuesday, Thursday. Were you in the room by yourself on Tuesday and Thursday? It was a Tuesday, but like I said, I only went, been moved to the room last week one, like in one day. Okay, so Thursday you were not by yourself? I was, yeah, yeah, that's That's it. what I'm asking you. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Do you feel that you're being punished? What she does that? I mean, I don't know what she's doing. I think she just... Well, how do you feel when she does it? I'm when just... sitting in that room. 
I'm just like, I don't know why she's doing this. When you're in there by yourself, what are you thinking? I'm just thinking, like, is she doing this for, for like, um, just for, like, I don't know, just to separate us, see if we would work better. But, I mean, even though we are working and just relaxing and chatting, like other students. Or is she just keep me by myself and having all the other students that was by my table just hang out with other new friends that they know? Well, next question. Have you asked her why she's done it? No. Why? Um, because, to be honest, she was pretty much like a nice teacher. She, matter of fact, she had like nice emotions, but so I mean, like, I didn't really like bother to ask her because I didn't want her to make her. What do you mean she had nice emotions? Like she, like, she seemed like a nice person, but to be what? honest, she moved me by myself, so I thought she was doing it for like a good reason, but I didn't know why she was doing it. Well, they're not worried about her, well, they're worried about her intentions. Yeah. That's the point. I don't, I don't get her intentions yet. So you didn't ask her because she's a nice teacher. I mean, like I didn't know her. I not. I didn't know I mean, her well enough. Fault. This we're is not, a new not, art teacher. I, we're not attacking you. It's just. It's just. It's. It's strange and it's bad that she's doing that and that she's picking you. And so that's what we're trying myself. to get. Yeah. Yeah. We're the trying point to get. is, I don't get her intentions. When he was in elementary school, the principal. We didn't even know this was happening. When he was in second grade, um, by the time it was, I think after spring break, we learned that the principal was making him come and have lunch in the office by himself for the entire school year. The principal, when we found out, um, one of the teachers mentioned it to us, and we were like, what? He was away from all the kids. The principal called us and said, well, I felt that Anthony got over-energized by being around all the other kids. So... You're trying to label him as having some kind of, you know, so you are you arbitrarily, you just objectively decided you needed to make him sit by himself at lunch. The only socialization time they have where they can not, you know, out of the learning lessons and learning environment where they're just by themselves, you took him and made him sit in a room in the office and eat lunch by itself for the entire school year. Yeah. So we learned that, you know, it was after spring break when we, when we learned that. Nobody said anything, and he didn't say anything to us. He was in second grade. He just was going along with what was happening. So, basically, they died. They self-diagnosed him. They tried to. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Candace Lucas, because that was before we met her, and she came on after they tried something else. And, oh, man, I tell you. Basically, they trying to say that he's disrupted. Mm-hmm. They were saying that so he got too to over. That, you think they're trying to do that again so that you're disruptive? Yeah, yeah. They're not isolating you? Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Every time I hear he's been placed by himself somewhere, that's immediately what I think of. But you need to ask. Young man. Well. You need to ask. In a sense, he shouldn't because yes, they're going to target him. Mm. And then you don't know in these schools what happens is and then they start targeting him and then they'll suspend him. Or he'd be in trouble. Jay, like, he needs to know why he he is being treated. Well, that's why she's gonna go to school. Mm-hmm. But he needs to know. No, he gonna find out. But once she handles it. What time are the two of y'all speaking up for herself? Yeah, he can advocate for himself. New King County schools. And the next question would be, if that is the norm, then why is he the only one being treated in such a manner? Mm-hmm. Of the kids who are being separated, are you the only one who is, is of color or ethnic? Any Is anybody else that's being separated white? Oh, um, no. There is this one kid that's next to me who is also black, but... He just gets separated to a new whole new table with, new, with some other kids. There needs to be some kind of diversity council, at least in the school system. 
you all need something of that sort and I'm gonna approach the school board with it. It needs to be instituted before the high school. All right. Well, what are we gonna not, talk now, about? You just, she's gonna do your, a question. Your, your experience uh, um, when you had kids in school, when you had Joey in school, how, how was that? It's been such a long time ago that I forgot. Well, he's still bad, but he's not in jail, though, aren't you? I mean, no, no, and and you you recording now? Yeah, I'm recording now. Oh, so what? So what about school? I mean, like, if you enjoy watching your kids in school, what was it? One of the good things that you enjoyed about seeing Jeffrey and Joey? Yeah. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, a long time. Well, it wasn't. Time. It's not even about enjoying watching them in school. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's about what 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 I'm what I want to what I want to know is what in we're we're talking about ending the school to prison pipeline, okay? Which means that what was different when they were in school? What did you see that was different that may have caused them to um maybe what what would have caused them to end up in jail now that you see now in school that could call you know what's the difference between when they were in school and what you see now that could have led them to end up in jail that may be caused by maybe the um the government or the educational system Ooh. you see what i'm saying yeah 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 um again this goes back to way back where when they took Teachers used to be able to, to discipline you more, better. Yeah. Now, there's, they took that away. Even parents can't even discipline their kids. But um, I think there's, that is the structure of being able to discipline a kid has left the school system. So discipline how, though? Like, you know... Don't you think that they discipline children, um, ethnic kids, and kids of color more than they did, that they do white children or non-children of color? Rachel? <laughs> uh, I'm different because I didn't go to a public school, so okay. I went to a private school my whole life. Okay. okay. But we were very diverse, that's for sure. But everything was everything was way more structured than a public school was. We didn't have the opportunities like public schools did to get in that much trouble because we were, for example, we had 400 people in the whole school, you know, versus... However many 1800. you guys had yeah. Yeah, in public school. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... So you had you individualized more. attention. You had yeah. less kids in the classroom. Mm -hmm. yeah. You couldn't... You, we, we weren't allowed to have phones. I know people now have their phones out in school yeah. taking calls in class. If we did right. that, you'd be expelled, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there some, was no option yeah. for that. Yeah. And that is a big problem right now. What about you, Joy? So, Man, if I got caught my phone in class, it would take it all the way till June and have my mom come pick it up. Yes. <laughs> And that was terrible. We get it home and flush it on the toilet. <laughs> if yeah, I have to. Other things. <laughs> yes. Do you think do you think that your mom's language barrier was difficult, made it difficult for you um with uh, uh, you know, getting anything accomplished in school, Joey? No. And how about you, Yolanda? Did you not understand anything that was going on in school because of your language barrier? No. No, because, you know, I learned English many, many years ago. I've been in this country 31 years. So, mm -hmm. And I learned it from the beginning because I knew, like, that's the only way you can, you know, get better in life in this country if you learn the language. Mm -hmm. Because without that, you know, it would be even worse. So, yeah. no, I do. As a matter of fact, I teach my children a lot when they was little, you know, a lot of things meaning in English mm -hmm. and in Spanish. So... No. Okay. So you were involved in school and you, um, your language was not a barrier. You still were a part of what, you know, your children's progression in school. Yes. PTA yes. meetings and things. Definitely. Yeah. I used oh, to, shit. I was a I single mother. I was mm -hmm. a single mother with two boys, but I never missed one appointment with them or one meeting. You know, I always was there for them, and you know, I was able to understand everything they were telling me, thank God, and, and they was understanding me as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you never, so you didn't have any, no tuviste problema, ninguna problema en, en la escuela, no, no hubieron dificultades con, con, eh, comunicándote con alguien en la escuela, o con un muchacho, o llegando a otra etapa con ellos, 
No. En, no. en algo que tú quisiste lograr con ellos. No, no, para nada, para nada. Todo estuvo para mí bien fácil porque, como ya te expliqué, um, antes de yo tener niños ya yo sabía inglés. So, en realidad, gracias a Dios eso fue algo importante, tomar la decisión de ir a la escuela. Yo también fui al college por dos años. So, uh -huh. Eso me ayudó muchísimo a superarme como ser humano. ¿Tú piensas que será lo mismo ahora contigo o, o tú te crees que con la escuela ahora es, es un poquito más distinto para tú comunicarte con las personas en la escuela? ¿Tú bueno, crees que ha cambiado? No sé en realidad porque no estoy envuelta a lo que es escuela ya porque mis niños están, mis hijos están grandes y ya yo no prácticamente no participo en nada que sea referente con la escuela. Uh -huh. <laughs> do you think do you think that um school is it's important for the schools for the community to be involved with schools do you think um school is not just school but a community project whether you have kids or not um that everyone should be involved in what occurs within schools yeah i think so because somehow sooner or later you're going to be involved. Even if your kids are big, yeah. then you're going to have your grandchildren, yeah. which the one you have to, you know, be there for them and definitely taking care I of think, them as you did with your kids. Right. I, but I think that um, for the most part, parents should participate more. There should be, I mean, just PTA meetings are fine, but there should be more involvement of parents, like, you know, instead of three times, four times a year, the parents come for PTA meetings. I think that parents should have some type of activity or involvement to come to school at least, you know, once a month. But just parents, how about businesses and and just um, kids who graduated from school? How about just people in general? Don't you think it should be a community effort? That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. That's a good That's a good idea. Yeah. I think if we all, you know, get together in that yeah. matter, it would, it would be a lot better because there's a lot of going on today. Yeah with the kids mm -hmm. and, you know, in and out of the school and also, you know, with this technology, you know, it's... And bring the police really in too, you know, have police involved in this whole yeah. effort. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a... Like well, our goal, our goal is not to bring the police in. <laughs> oh, no police? Uh, no police, <laughs> because, you know, what happens with the police, with us, is that the police have a tendency... Teachers have a tendency to use the police against us, okay, and they target... Um, ethnic kids and children of color ah. so they're used against us and the goal is to get more counselors into the schools um, sometimes a child may just be hungry right. or, or maybe going through some abuse at home or may have some mental health issues right. or may you know there may be something else going on with that kid uh, right. you know may have ADD or right. you know whatever right Mm -hmm. And a teacher may get, you know, may not be, um, have the patience or the tolerance for that student and, and get a teacher, a yeah, get a police, police involved. And there you go. The child has a yeah. criminal record. Right. Right. So our goal is to not have police involved. You have no. some wonderful police officers, but yeah. then you have police officers who, you know, also have short tempers and, you know, escalate, um, Situations. Yeah, which brings to my point, like activities for the community to be involved in schools yeah. mm -hmm. um, should not exclude the police. I'm just saying, like, better maybe, training, maybe. Yeah, maybe they should be involved so they can know to step back more from the the issues and, and situations that occur in school with children. So they'll know, hey, listen, this is not a matter for me. This is something in-house, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe, right. maybe that might work, too, uh, you know, to include yeah. the police. And and also, I can add it, like, um, I think the parents should be involved a little bit more in what's going on with the kids in school, especially when they come with technology, like, for instance, mm -hmm. cell phone. I think they should never allow kids to have a cell phone in class because... They interfere with the, with the learning and <laughs> the activity on the school at that moment, and that, and that moment, and also it will interrupt, you know, um, the class. And teacher might be going through a lot because I heard they're talking already about that. I'm a business owner, and I, you know, I work with teachers as well, and you know, that's a challenge for them right now, mm -hmm. since you know the parents. Um, 
they keep texting the kids or calling the kids and they got answer because the mom calling me. So I remember when my kid was in school, we already had cell phone. I never called my kids in the cell phone. If I had something to say or something to do related with them at that time, or either go to the school in person, or I, you know, go and talk to the teacher mm -hmm. after school, or, or, or I got an appointment with them, and then, but that every day, calling on the phone for the kids, right now, that is a challenge for the teachers, and for the, they own good because, you know, while they are on the phone, they're not learning what they're supposed to learn, you know, so. Joey, you're laughing. I think that um, it's ridiculous that I see people on Snapchat in the classroom making fun of the teachers and laughing at each other. If that was me, <laughs> when I was in school 10 years ago, I'm telling you, I, I would get in so much trouble. Mm. I used to run away from the, the teachers to, when they would take my phone. But I was very popular at Hermitage, so mm -hmm. it was really hard for me to, to hide. And, uh, and stay in places until it would like go away. But yeah, I I would have to run away from them sometimes. Literally, like run around Hermitage for mm -hmm. them not to take my phone because I didn't want them to bother my mom from work and yeah have her Me. come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every everything I did with in high school that I knew I was gonna get in trouble, I would try to avoid my mom being into it so that I can handle yeah, it. Yeah, that means respect. So that's another thing. The kids yeah, are kids losing a lot of respect, respect for their own parents. That's, that's and that's, that is true. that's that's the that's beginning true. because school, you know, they be second hour in school, but where they spend more time is at home. If you don't discipline your kids. Exactly. You home know, training is important. Yeah, it's very important. important. It's very important because that way, you know, you helping the teacher as well. Yeah. yeah. So you think that all parents are able to come in to school? Yes. Do you think it's fair? Could, could. Well, well, yeah, yeah, you I, can. I, if you okay. want to do it, you can. Everything you want to, yeah. even everything that you want to yeah. do, you can do it. Yeah, you introduce yeah. a, you introduce a schedule where parents can make it. You know, after work, some parents get off late. You know, you might have to say, "Hey, we have a meeting at eight o'clock." You know, what I'm saying it's only fifteen minutes, so that'll entice a parent to come. You but know. you're thinking about parents who work. You're not thinking about parents who are incarcerated, parents who are disabled, grandparents who are raising their kids, yeah. parent, grandparents who have children, um, all the, the kids of, of all the, you know, children that were left at their house. So you have to think about other situations where it's other to well but yeah. you know um, you know, we take a lot for granted. You know, we think that we think that every parent is raising their own kid. No, but anybody that is in charge with a child, yeah. either that the mother is or father they are in jail Should or are working side. or are just, you know, doing whatever they want to, they want to do, whoever is in, char in charge of these kids, they consider them part at the moment. Mm -hmm. They are considered they're responsible for those kids and they're the one who have to show up over there. Because, all of, I mean, for real, if the person is in jail, they cannot come out and go to the meeting. But whoever <laughs> taking care of the kids, they have to go to the right, meeting right. and be there and face whatever going on in the school related to the child. Yeah. yeah. So. Do, do public schools have access to, like, like do you all see counselors, like, on, like, monthly or every other month? Well, you know, right now the counselors, the counselors are doing away with a lot of the counselors. And they're um, that's a big mistake. Repla exactly. I, I they're replacing them with um, they're replacing them with resource officers, yeah. Yeah. which are police officers instead. Yeah. My yeah. counselor was yeah. a good part of my right. high school yeah. career. Yeah. Well, that's they're they're, they're they're yeah reducing the amount of counselors. Yeah. And that's they, another thing that it might affect. In, you know, if you give it to the counselors, yeah. you're getting so rid cool. of a, an important part of the system that allows kids to. You know, well, that's happening, outreach. and that's what that's one of our biggest arguments is the fact that you know you can, you need to facilitate, um, you need to include more, increase the amount of counselors in schools, yeah. and reduce you know the, the police. amount. Yeah, 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 it makes sense. Yeah. So, but okay, thank <laughs> you very much <laughs> for your time, yeah, and thank um, you. For, thank you. you know, appreciate it. Thank take you. that in consideration. High five, everyone. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Group high five. <laughs> <laughs>
no, according to section 2.4.8, that the diet she'll spit. The, and immediately when she comes out, they retreat because they don't know how to handle her. And I think, and, and it's not, um, she's not nice about it. She's not diplomatic about it. She's like a tiger. But again, that's her right to be because she doesn't have to be diplomatic. She doesn't have to make the rules comfortable. Mm -hmm. She has to put it in a frame where you understand that you're responsible for following it. For me as an analyst, because you know, oftentimes it's a threat because she knows more than they do. And if the goal is to feed the child to the school to prison pipeline, if the goal is to remove the child from the class, if the goal is to not pay for an autistic child to go to an autistic school because the school doesn't view his black life meaningfully, then her challenging that becomes a threat. And what I have witnessed is that the response to her knowledge or the response
like to piggyback on the parent engagement because, you know, a lot of times we beat up on parents and their lack of engagement, but we also don't realize that or don't recognize the fact that some people's circumstance um, prevents them from engaging. Um, sometimes you got to take it to them for you to do that. It could be a mental circumstance, physical. You know, a lot of people um, growing up have and that sometimes developing physical. developing something within their setting, an environment, connecting with your, utilizing your resources, a uh, social service organization, a nonprofit organization, connecting with that right. um, community um, center or something, and bringing it to them is well, a form of engagement as well. And the, so and the school is yeah. is very resistant on, in, in doing that. You know, I, I disagree that the school is resistant to that. Well, There's you know, I haven't had fact. any. Well, hold on, you asked me questions. Well, I didn't ask the question. I was responding. Yeah, that's right. You made a step, and that's yeah. a good one. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the parent engagement is very important, but mm -hmm. you're absolutely right in that not every parent has a good And also the ethnic, the ethnic um, barriers, the, the language and the, you know, the ethnic differences. Not every parent has a good experience going through school either. So some are reluctant to participate in school for other reasons mm -hmm. as well. So we do have to look for ways to reach the parents wherever they happen to be and whatever their circumstances. So, the, so that's one level of parent engagement as well. I, I, I had been on the school board very long enough, and a teacher shared with me a story where she went, she went to visit children in their homes, mm -hmm. uh, and she said, and the mom said, she asked the mom, they were talking about reading and helping students and all, and she said, no, I, 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 my student reads every night. He sits down here and, and he just gets up and says, read. You know, I make him, I sit there and make him read. And the teacher dawned on her that. That's what that's what this parent thought reading was a student was about, you know, and it meant that she was cooking and cleaning and doing everything else she had to do. So she sat down and kind of modeled, like, well, why don't you read a sentence and he reads a sentence and a paragraph and a paragraph on a page and a page and kind of bring it up. And she said it never crossed her mind that when she was saying read with your read with your student for fifteen minutes, that, that some parents meant, you know, sit there no matter what and read versus reading with your student. So she began to model that behavior with, with her one-on-one -on -one with parents and everything else. And she saw a marked improvement, not just 